Treasonous, who's evolutionist? Does it really matter who's right? Yes, it does. This is a matter of life or death. Eternal life or death. Yeah, I, I guess I can see that under your belief system. Is it because if people believe creationism is right, then they'll go to heaven, and if they don't, they'll go to hell? Something like that? Or why? Why? Because one of these belief systems embraces God and salvation in Jesus Christ. And the other belief system leads to doubt, emptiness, and a godless universe. I... wait, what? That's why this is a matter of life or death? If people believe in evolution, it actually leads to an empty godless universe? Like, reality itself is dictated by what people believe? I don't think you quite understand- Let's start by discussing the animals in Noah's Ark. Inheritable Variation Question number one. I just want to point out, there is no question number two. Anywhere. Nice iteration there. How many pairs of animals went on to Noah's Ark? It has been estimated, we're not counting extinct animals, only those that are alive now, because if they went extinct after being on the Ark, they weren't on the Ark. Logic. It has been estimated that not more than 290 are above the size of a sheep. Those of the size from the sheep to a rat, 760. And those smaller than the rats, around 1,360. The average animal size would be a cat. Even if we pretend all cats are the same size, a cat is not an average size. The size of a cat would be the average size. Try writing a cat as the answer to any question on your math exam and see how well that works out. Arrowed! Meow. Bah. These numbers total to be 2,410 different kinds of animals that went on to Noah's Ark. Would 30 different types of dogs or cats need to get on the Ark? No. All we would need is two dogs and two cats. And each of those pairs of animals would be carrying all the genetic coding to reproduce all the dogs and cats and tigers and wolves. For sure. House cat DNA contains all the genetic information needed to make a tiger, ocelot, lynx, and lion. It is a verifiable scientific fact. God could easily do it this way. He's God. Wait, so God's directly participating in rebuilding all the cats and tigers and dogs and wolves? Then why do you need cats and dogs on the ark carrying the genetic encoding for the tigers and wolves? He's not powerful enough to make animals without a template or what? Look, far be it from me to question Sky Daddy, but this sounds like the dumbest way to do anything ever. Here is what the evolutionists ignore, and what creationists have failed to clearly communicate. How can we be ignoring what you failed to clearly communicate? The post-flood world was vastly different from the pre-flood world. When the animals got off the ark, God evolved changes into the animals so they could survive in this new world. I'm going to assume you don't mean right when they got off the ark. Miss Kitty starts shooting out kittens of all different species like a machine gun. No, you probably mean over time, which means you think house cats evolved into every single cat species in 4400 years, and that God is directly responsible for dog breeding, and wolves evolved from dogs, and God couldn't just evolve changes into a fish or something and skip the arc things altogether. I guess he's not powerful enough to break his own arbitrarily created kind boundaries. And, and, oh, wow. This is a horrible, horrible insult to your God. If he existed, he'd be getting ready to kick your disrespectful ass right now. You talk about him like he's the biggest idiot in the universe. No pun intended. Darwin's main folly. Darwin misunderstood the meaning of kind, Genesis 1.24, etc., as related to species. During the 300 years before Darwin, the popular belief was that the Bible taught the total fixity of species, which means that all successive generations of all animals were all alike, as coins cast from the same die. Theologians of that day actually thought the Bible taught this, and they were wrong. So, theologians all thought their stupid idea was right until it was proven to them that evolution happens, and then they hastily changed their minds and insisted the Bible said what they previously insisted it didn't. Sounds about right.
When Darwin took his voyage on the Beagle to the Galapagos Islands, his keen eye saw the fact of inheritable variation. But then Darwin's imagination went completely overboard, and he began to believe that variation could proceed endlessly. But if Darwin's imagination fell overboard, how'd he base anything on it afterwards? Ah. Thus Darwin foisted the false teaching of endless progression, total evolution, upon the world. The Bible tells us that all living creatures were created in distinct kinds or groups, not species. Where does it say not species? I think I missed that verse just like the old theologians did. Seems odd that 1800 years after Jesus, people would still think that meant species if it says it's not species, eh? I guess they suck at reading the words clearly printed on the page. And God clearly permitted inheritable variation to take place among kinds of animals. The cat family spread out to include lions, tigers, blah blah blah. The dog family became yada yada yada, etc. But only one pair of these quote, kinds of animals needed to be on the ark to provide the genes for all of these quote, dogs and quote, cats. You're quote, good at quote, using quote, quotation marks. Darwin's error was thinking that one kind of animal can come from another kind. Cats never evolved from dogs or fish or from any other kind of life. Clearly, if God himself wasn't powerful enough to evolve one kind of animal into all the others, then there are such hard divisions between kinds in DNA that even he can't overcome them. Where can we find those? You know, I predict that in a few hundred years, Jim Pinkowski the 20th will write a book just like this, featuring the line, During the 300 years after Darwin, the popular belief was that the Bible taught the total fixity of kinds. That's a southern accent 300 years from now, by the way. Darwin's era was the result of an improper understanding of what the Bible seemed to teach in his day. I don't have Origin of Species memorized, but I don't think Darwin mentions in there that his theory was based on what the Bible teaches. Note, the beaks on Darwin's finches did evolve, with God's guidance. So evolution is partially true, star microevolution is perfectly okay. But endless progression is not true. Seriously, you guys, trust me on that one. Bible, 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 Bible. So there. So for the rest of this book, I will use the term evolution to represent endless progression because I have to conserve my ink. Macroevolution is error. Nine.